More on the issue of uh, environmental stuff, can you talk a little bit about uh, Harrison's Pond? Yes, all of my, well, one of my favorite topics, <laughs> I have to say. It, it is a very small pond, and in the, right. uh, in the whole grand scheme of the problems in Smithtown, uh, it may not uh, be on everyone's front burner. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me just give you a brief history of, uh, of Harrison's Pond. Harrison's Pond uh, was originally a, uh, a man-made pond. It was a fish hatchery back in the 1800s uh, in San Remo. Uh, prior to the houses being there, there were a number of hunting and fishing clubs. And what they would do is they would have these hatcheries where they would hatch uh, trout and other fish, release fish it into the right. river, and then go and fish. It's all part of the... Mm -hmm. uh, the ecology of the area and replacing what they take out of the mm -hmm. river, kind of like that old New England you know, horse sense about them. And then when the uh, psychiatric center came, there was a need for ice. And so they began to use the pond to make ice for the psychiatric center. And as time went on, refrigeration it was uh, came and we didn't need ice anymore and it eventually was turned into a town park. What happened is about five years ago, we had this nor'easter come through, and it dumped so much rain in the area, all the storm drains run into the river, which uh, feeds Harrison Pond. And this torrent of water washed away this dam, which actually created the pond, and the entire pond drained. Mm -hmm. And uh, since that time, nothing has been done is that we have this, this stream that is going around the old dam and eroding the base of the roadway. And uh, that's problem one in the area. Problem number two is that the area is continually floods with all the storm runoff coming from the surrounding area. And, uh, and it creates a safety hazard as well as a pollution hazard for the whole Nessaquag River area. In fact, the 2008 sound study which was recently completed, lists Smithtown Bay, the, trip, the body of water which the Nessaquag River and Harrison Stream empty into, mm -hmm. a, as having one of the most frequent hypoxia events. Though that, that's when the water, the, the oxygen the level drops in the water so low that it is a hazard to the fish and other wildlife in the area. In fact, all the lobsters died off a few years ago. Uh, generations of lobster fishermen had to close up business because they, they, there were no more lobsters. I mean, some people felt it was the spraying because of West Nile. I mean, who knows? But uh, the hypoxia certainly could not have helped that area. So we wanted to see if we can make some solutions to capture the storm water as well as make a final decision on what we're going to do with the pond, whether we're going to rebuild the pond or, um, or we're going to set it back to a natural stream. And so, and so what has happened is that a, uh, a group uh, of uh, naturalists uh, with a lot of letters after their names from New York City wrote a letter to our uh, local government and said that they don't want them to rebuild the dam and that, uh, and that they want to set the river back to its natural flow. And I don't know if you're familiar with the people in San Remo, but when they have outsiders coming in telling them how to live their lives, I tell you, we were at the next meeting of this association, and people were backed out the doors, and they were, they were angry because, uh, because they wanted their pond back. Right. And, uh, but in the end, things have changed so much in, in that area is that it is estimated that it's going to cost $750,000 to rebuild that dam. And the pond we're going to get isn't the type of pond that was once there. That it was a beautiful pond, but because that they haven't done thing, they haven't done anything for so long, natural vegetation has grown in. The DEC won't let you plow down that natural vegetation, mm -hmm. and some of it is rare. They have the uh, cattails and black willows and other type mm -hmm. of freshwater uh, uh, plant life that uh, the DEC says you can only have a little sliver of the pond, very similar to uh, a crescent moon. It's not mm -hmm. going to be a round pond. It's going to be a little crescent moon pond, and you have to install a fish ladder, which is very expensive and mm -hmm. unsightly. And so many people in the community, when taking a look at what is approaching a million dollars to rebuild this, uh, this pond in a, in a much smaller footprint than it once was, that uh, it might not make sense to do this. Our roads are crumbling. And, uh, and to spend a million dollars, what are we going to get, a million dollar mud puddle? That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense in our community, at least for, for, for myself. 
And what I think would be a better solution in that area would be to remove the remains of the old dam, stop the erosion, and let's build a different type of park. The Harrison Stream Park, where, is, uh, where it's based, we store the old footbridge that used to be there. Things that cost tens of thousands of dollars, not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And what's more is that we, there are many, many grants available from federal, local, state agencies which, are, which provide for the funding for removal of old dams. And, okay. so, uh, and so that's what we'd like to see happen. Okay. Where we'd like to see that old dam be removed, the natural flow of the Harrison River be restored, and, and to begin to tackle the problem of controlling that storm runoff, which is polluting our rivers and killing off our fish. So okay. uh, that would be a good first thought.